Hi, welcome back to 441, our continued, continued class on fatigue and how to, how to design components. Today, up to now, we have been looking at uh, components where it is under normal conditions, where the load is very precisely known. It's always steady cyclic load. The first time, we are going to look at something in which the load is reasonably predictable, but it is not steady cyclic. Look at the graph on the side. If you if you if you look at this graph, you can see that you know this this particular machine is cycling, but it is cycling between different levels. Initially, it starts out; it does one cycle at 10 ksi. Ksi is kilo pounds per square inch, so it's 10 ksi. The next cycle is 20 ksi, then another 10 ksi, then 25 ksi, then two 10 ksi's, then at 20 ksi, you know another one then a big spike then so on so now you have a much more complicated situation so what what do you do now i mean you have to figure out first of all under these conditions will it last forever if not how long will it last rather than talk to you about the theory of this and all that i will tell you how to do a particular problem and in the process you learn the uh, basic structure okay so let's read the problem together so we have a circular stepped shaft of major diameter 50 millimeters and minor diameter 25 millimeters with a fillet radius of 3, 3 mm and it is machined from a AISI 1060 steel. The loading is of completely reversed torsion. So this is the first time where it is undergoing cyclic load because probably you know it is one of those situations probably something happened to the machine and instead of going through steady torsion it is undergoing oscillating torsion. During a typical 30 second operation under overload conditions. So notice what is happening you are now looking at what is the possibility of overload and you want to figure out if it is overloaded how long it will last. Okay? So the nominal stress in the 20, 25 mm diameter is shown in the figure. So apologies for the typos but you know this is the nominal stress. So the actual one you have to multiply by stress concentration factor, K fatigue and all that we will do that. We need to estimate the life of the shaft if it operates continuously like this. How long will it last before I have to do something? Is it going to last thousands of hours or is it going to fail immediately or is it going to last forever? Okay, So this is our task. So we are going to start this. Most of the calculations we are going to do uh, by using our, our Excel spreadsheet because it is easy for us to do. First thing we do is the following. We do material analysis. That means we have to find out SUT, SC and all that. So we are going to start out by doing material. So step 1 material analysis so if i do the material analysis i'm going to write up all this stuff since uh, i can do that in excel pretty easily i'm going to blow it up a little bit and you can see better there you go so now your excel spreadsheet will be kind of large and you can see what i'm doing so the first thing is s ultimate tensile strength and it turns out to be uh, eight, uh, 680 megapascals. You know, this is all back of the book. Okay, and then SY again back of the book, and it turns out to be uh, how much is that? 370 megapascals. Okay, then as soon as you do that. We can now compute a whole bunch of things. We can compute S, SE prime, which is 0 0.5 times SE, sorry, SUT, which turns out to be 340 megapascals. The reason why I am doing it in Excel is because then we can see what will happen. Then we need to also calculate, because we are looking at finite life, so we need to also calculate SF, which turns out to be F times. S ult, uh, ultimate and if you look at this, this turns out to be equal to 0 0.9 because uh, S ultimate is 680 megapascal. So if you look at it, it is fairly low. So you can assume 0 0.9, you know, with all of these things, you do not have to be very exact. That is item number one. We need to know not whether it will last 12.32 hours. We just want to know whether it lasts kind of about, about one day, half a day, 10 days. What is the story? Okay. So we do not have to do deal with a lot of accuracy. So times that okay. 
So all of these things, pretty straightforward, right? So now, as usual, we have to do fatigue corrections, right? So what are our fatigue corrections? First one, uh, K surface. This is a machine surface. So it will turn out that K surface turns out to be 0 0.8. K, uh, K size again from the book turns out to be 0 0.88 this is 25 mm so it is 0 0.88 and then K temp nothing room temperature and so it is 1 K load this is torsion and so it turns out to be 0 0.59 done so now we are ready to say okay so what is uh, se turns out to be equal to se prime times this times that times that times that 141 forget about all this point 2224 mega pascals there so we got SE is 141 megapascals. Okay, so we are uh, almost done. We next need to calculate the finite light stuff. So we need to calculate what is uh, uh, the uh, what is that? Uh, we know that um, SN turns out to be. Um, what is that? Uh, SF times n over 10 cubed to the power b, right? Remember this. So what I want to do is I want to calculate b, and it turns out to be equal to 1 over 3 times log. So I don't want to put an equal sign. 1 over 3 log SF. Uh, sorry, SE over SF. And if you calculate it, this will turn out to be equal to 1 over 3 times log 10 log 10 of SE. This divided by that minus 0.2128. So now uh, we are pretty much ready. So we can actually compute for any particular value. We can compute n. So this is as far as all our uh, stuff goes. And we want to know for a given load how many cycles will it last. That we can do, right? So if I tell you what is the alternating load, if it was steady alternating, I can tell you n. N will turn out to be um, S n. That is the load at which it is going to operate divided by uh, S f to the power 1 over b times 10 cube. So we are going to use this. Okay, But now unfortunately it is cycling many times. So the idea behind the minor palm grain rule. So this is what we are after. This is, this is not correct. Let us be completely frank. Okay, The method that we are talking about is not correct. It won't predict things all that well, but it will give you a lower bound, and it's not too bad if the cycle is not too strange. If you do random loads, you cannot do this. If the overload is too much, it will not do. All kinds of restrictions are there. So please be aware that this is not exactly right, but it's a very crude, quick way. Okay. So this is what we are after. We're going to talk about the.